Good afternoon to you Tony. I'm here right now with the legendary ATS Anton Tony Spindler. Uh, to me, the brand ambassador of Rottweilers today. All the credentials, one of the most experienced judges uh, in the ADRK, more than 20,000 dogs over 20 years. He's a judge for both the working and the breed shows. He conducts seminars on behalf of uh, the ADRK for both obedience and breed judges. Uh, he's a qualified uh, breed surveyor for Germany and he's also part of the government panel for socializing dogs and uh, the regulatory side of things for not just Rottweilers but dogs in general. First of all from a judge's perspective when you see a Rottweiler what do you look for? Well thank you very much it's an honor for me to be here and uh, you know to help the breed to get better no matter where they are uh, I just love this black dog so anyhow what I'm looking in in dogs it's it's very simple I just compare the dog to the standard and then I see okay where does the dog fulfill the standard where ha has he let's say things which are not completely there or maybe overdone so you look at the dog as a total not go part by part in the beginning no it, uh, I think it, uh, it works out only if you see the whole picture in the beginning. If you look for details, you get lost in details. You maybe see something which is maybe not okay, but all of a sudden you make it bigger than it is. As an example, we have uh, the priority one issues, which is the structure, which is height, angulation, back. Then we have beauty things. Beauty things are mouth pigmentation. Should, is it dark enough? Should it be a little bit darker? Coat. Is it very nice or is it very strong? Or markings. Are they rich? Are they well defined? Or let's say are they a little bit muddy? These are beauty points. But beauty points can never beat structure points. Exactly. Thanks for clarifying that, Tony. Now, as a breeder, and you have bred some really good dogs before until you said, I have no time for it anymore. Um, as a breeder, what would you do to start a kennel? Uh, well, this is a very interesting question. Thank you very much for that, Deno. First of all, I think it is important that you get knowledge about the breed. Don't start breeding without any knowledge. Go to talk to other breeders, go to shows, try to be knowledgeable about the breed and then make up your mind. Very important to me, why do you want to breed? Do you love the breed or let's say or do you have commercial reasons? To me it all has to start with the love of the breed. If it pays off, that's fine. But please, the priority must be the love of the breed. Once you have decided you want to be a Rottweiler breeder, what's the next step? Well, let's say you decided to become a Rottweiler breeder. Obviously, your next step must be to prepare your environment, to have a nice kennel, to have a nice place where the bitches can give birth. And do you have the right bitches? Bitches. So you don't look for a sire from whom you will take a litter, but you actually look at which bitch am I going to breed from? Well, of course. Look, the, to me, the carrier of the breed, and thanks to my idol, uh, Willy Hedke, he always told me this, the carrier of the breed are the bitches. The males, well, you can, there are plenty nice males around. They're just waiting to have nice dogs. But, we need good bitches to get the good result which is coming together. Just very, very simple. 
in theory, 50% of the puppy is giving from the mother, 50% is coming from the father. Okay, if you use a top stock male, uh, they maybe differentiate only for 5%. So you have either 45 or 50%. But if the bitch is giving only 30%, 25%, 40%, that means the result can never be really high. Is, is there a set of bloodlines that we can say are really super for females? Or is it that irrespective of which bloodline you could find a great female to breed from? Well, let me answer it in this way. I never did and I never will promote any lines, any dogs, because I love the breed and I have great respect for all dogs. First. Second, what is good, what is nice? Is nice, is red a nice color or is blue a nice color? It depends on your individual goals. What is good? Let's say there are some people who are really interest in sports. Maybe the winning bitch of this weekend doesn't fulfill their expectations in sports and the other way around. We have people who really like to go to shows, maybe they don't want to see the best bitch in sports because they want to have the complete world value. My personal goal was always, but this is very personal, the complete Rottweiler, which is useful for everything. I took them to shows, I did a little bit of sports, such as I put one, two, three, just everything. This is, the, the Rottweiler is one of the, f the few breeds where you still can do everything. It's a, just a, a complete dog. Thanks for bringing us to this topic right now because interestingly the world thinks that it's going to split into a show type dog and a working type dog and there are a lot of breeders in a lot of countries who don't have sport to even test out whether their dogs can do sport. Uh, in this global environment for our breed do you think splitting the breed is actually an option the breed can afford to have? Um, well, I think it, it's not an option, it's not a way, it's a disaster. Look, this is like what you, you would say, you want to, would like to have two different types of dogs. But we have a Rottweiler. Rottweiler is so unique because he is complete. It doesn't supposed to mean necessarily that if you don't have the possibility to do sports, that you don't use the traits of a good sport dog, which is very good self-confidence, uh, very good character. This is the basic of a good sport dog. And the same thing, it's not enough if it's only a good sport dog. Let's say a, a Rottweiler male with 30 kilograms is not a Rottweiler male. It is something whatsoever, but it's not a Rottweiler. So please, stay with the unique Rottweiler. It doesn't matter. See, there are a lot of fast cars also in India, even though you have speed limit, don't you? Right. But you don't say, I don't want to have this nice car. True. Same with the dogs. The differentiating factor predominantly is over the head type. And certain lines carry a certain progressive trait on the head type and certain lines carry a different progressive trait on the head type and the breed standard per se allows flexibility what do you think is our major problem in the breed head type today where have we gone overboard what should we be doing to come back to what is right from both sides from the sports side because some dogs on the sports side are extremely low on the head quality and the other side are extremely overdone on the head quality Oh, thank you very much for that question again. Yeah, let me start with the sport dogs. I don't, I, I, I don't agree. I think it's not a question that those dogs which are very good in sports have a specific head types. No, they have specific qualities such as prey drive, such as uh, overall drive, such as uh, uh, character, etc. It, it, it's, it's just it maybe appears to the in general here and there that these dogs have a lack in head type. No, they're not. It's just of their other qualities. 
the other po question is, and uh, this is very, very important, we should not change the Rottweiler standard in any shape or form. There is a description of the head type, the muscle, the relation from the muscle to the skull should be 1 to 1.5. It says clearly no wrinkles, it says clearly a strong head, but not an overtyped head, no wrinkles, uh, uh, correct eyes, uh, uh, strong lips, no loose lips, these are the correct trademarks. So there is no need for any changes, no. It, it, there is a need to be focused on the standard which was written many many years ago for a healthy strong dog. This, what we, this is all our responsibility to keep the Rottweiler healthy and strong. In the ADRK we have a statistical tool called the dog base. Can you tell us something about the dog base? Well sure, dog base is, as you said completely right, is a statistic tool. And as we all know, the statistic uh, has a high value the higher the numbers are which were put in. As an example, uh, you can make statistics about anything. I did statistics for my breeding programs uh, about IPO3 titles. You have a pedigree, there you have 15 dogs. And then you, you analyze the pedigree and say, okay, how many of these 15 dogs do have an IPO3 title, let's say 12. That means you have a certain percentage and the higher the percentage is, the higher the possibility is that the offspring, the puppies to come, will have maybe also a lot of drive. And you can do it with everything. You can do it with hair type, you can do it with bone strength, just with everything. This is what it's all based about. Nowadays we use it mainly for statistics about HD and ED. Uh, do, they, do you also have a database on teeth? Uh, we, we do have, but it's, all, it's only uh, the under or overshot. So, but teeth has you know, a lot of more points, such as missing P2s, missing P1s, missing M3s. They are not in that uh, uh, statistics. I see. So this is done uh, before the dogs leave the breeder? Exactly. So after the dogs go at the at say 12 weeks or 8 weeks, we don't know what happens to them. Well, dog. you will know it after the dog has done a CTP. Yeah, but the numbers the of the CTP will go right into, into the, the base. dog base. So the dogs that have a faulty mouth may never come. For exactly, a that's the weak point. And the dogs that have weak hips may never come. Exactly. So this means that all maybe the dogs that go, I mean a lot of dogs go out of Germany, so even they will be excluded, right? Exactly. So, does that really help? Well, it helps a lot. See, you don't need to have 100% data to assume what is with the rest. We say, or in general we said, if you have, let's say, 5 to 10% data input, you can assume about the rest of the 90% to, to the 100%. Okay, so you mean that a, a sample size, this is more like a sample size exactly. out of the universe and not the entire universe, but you assume that the universe samples, the sample size is representative of the universe. It's pretty accurate. Right. It's, as I said, the more data you have, because you have the data from the straight line, but you have it also from the brothers, from the sisters, from the generations before. Good. So it's not just horizontal, it's also vertical. Exactly. Both sides. Yeah? yeah, all sides. So then there is a weightage assigned to each uh, parent or descendant. Exactly. And then it affects the individual score. Exactly. So this is pretty scientific, it's detailed. Yeah. yeah? It's, it's, it's pretty detailed. And, okay, let me, let me say something else. It is more helpful to have a number which has a currency of, let's say, 90% to have no number. Exactly. Some data in the absence of no data. Yeah. Great. The other point that I would uh, ask you at this moment is, is it possible for foreign dogs to get added to the ADRK dog base? Uh, honestly, I think so, but I'm not absolutely sure. Before I give a, a wrong answer, 
we might as well contact our head brain warden Edgar Hammer. You're right. You are the father, so to speak, of the world family, your brainchild, so to speak. And uh, now we have the IFR show, the World Championship. You have the uh, the RK World Show, which is the uh, uh, world family representation, and then you have the club Sikha Chuk Chow. Now, what's the differentiation going forward for the DRK club Sikha Chuk Chow? Because for more than a hundred years, this has been the most coveted title. What breeders from across the world look forward to? Well, actually, next year the club Sikha Show. Uh, and the ADRK will have his 110th anniversary, which will be represented at the Club Seeker Show. And fortunately, this Club Seeker Show will be in my hometown in Augsburg. Very close, by the way, to the Munich airport. Very convenient to travel. It will be a huge event. Okay. Actually, we have another very highly respected show. This is the FCI World Show. So if we put everything together we have four heavyweights in shows and to me I think the most prestigious title is the ADIK uh, 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 Club Seeker title. On the same scale I would see the ADIK World Show but also a very very high title is the IFR World Seeker Show. So I and I personally hope that we all try to be a happy family, to be together, uh, to work for the breed. And it's nothing more and nothing less. It's all about this nice beautiful black dog. So come on, everybody should compromise just a little tiny little bit with a lot of respect for everyone and work together. Thanks for that lovely uh Beautiful insight. Thanks a lot for your time. See you soon. Thank you very much.